Okay, and it's exactly five minutes. So I will now open the floor. So we're going to start our our meeting. Allow me to record so that we'll share the recordings also with other ambassadors who will. Uh, okay, yeah, it's exactly five minutes. So yes, I will now open the floor. So we're going to start our our meeting allow me to record so that we'll all right great to see you today and um once again i'm samuel Budoy. i'm in charge of youth programs at global peace foundation and peace building and um i like i would just love to thank you for joining this session uh this uh, afternoon and um we are privileged to um host you our ambassadors just to maybe give a few reports of what we did uh, last week in mombasa thanks joseph for joining i'm sure we did a lot uh, in regards to tree planting in the coastal region that is mombasa and kilifi um it was a one week the uh, exercise which was very successful and uh, we had our great partners standard media and of course representatives also from uh, yellow lumumba foundation and employee and area foundation were part of the sponsors and uh, yeah so it was amazing uh, meeting young people diverse uh, you know uh, cultures from the coastal region we managed to plant uh, across uh, 30 institutions that's we are, we are, we targeted uh, schools churches uh, mosques and uh, government institutions so it was uh, it was so amazing it was covered on ktn and kenya ktn farmers tv and uh, yeah today we are having our second uh, uh, open forum and uh, in this forum, we are going to share some fun opportunity from different counties. So we targeted uh, our first start, we start with 10 counties, tell us some fun facts about uh, your county, what are some of the amazing things that can, uh, you know, um, attract somebody from Nairobi to come to maybe, let me say, Zoom or, uh, or uh, Siaya or um, Garissa or uh, Machakos. So this is our platform. Feel free to interact. And just before we start, may, may I just hear some few, um, maybe feedback from the program. How is it so far on your end? Are you learning anything from our past trainings, the last, uh, training that we had on uh, peace building was it um, a good thing for you and uh, how is your may so we are ending our may today and then we'll be starting our trainings on leadership and uh, community development from tomorrow i'll send the materials and all the necessary things that you require for the first week of the leadership and community development now as a leader as a young leader you need to understand how to interact with your uh, your people in your community, how to help them also and nurture other leaders in your community. So it should be a very good uh, opportunity for you to get to to get all those materials on the Google Classroom and interact, ask questions. Yeah, and then from there we we move on as we proceed. Now, um, unless I, I'll welcome Calvin to say a word if uh, he's a online Calvin. If you can hear me, just say maybe two or three words before we welcome our first presentation from Halima, Nairobi County. Halima will be telling us some exciting uh, opportunities in, in Mombasa, uh, sorry, Nairobi challenges and some fun facts about uh, Nairobi. And then from there, we'll have Mombasa and then uh, Nyandarwa will be announcing uh, as we proceed. Thank you so much. Calvin, if you have a word before I yeah. do challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, th I think, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bidoy. Um, I think this is really good. Um, I mean, for me, I think um, so far it's, it's been quite a, a good experience, you know, working with the ambassadors and uh, I mean, ex ex especially the, you know, the recent uh, project that we did together in the coast, I think that was quite uh, a sign of unity and, uh, and also the commitment from the ambassadors and also just to realize what they are actually most of them are doing amazing stuff. And so, yeah, so this is this being progressed. Also, you know, the fact that most people have been able to take the, uh, the they've been having, I think that was been really, really good. Uh, maybe my emphasis, and that most of the time I emphasize on this is that, uh, as you all know, the ambassador program is only going to be one year. And so uh, it's high time that we think of uh, what would be the best way of you know the creating the alumni network and, and that's why i've been always, always talking about a consortium that they need to start working on their different consortium and this is quite something that i'm i'm actually quite interested to see the progress of each county in terms of uh, how far they've gone with the, the different consortium so i think personally I, i'll be following maybe through the groups through the different groups that we have to be able to see if uh, if the different um, Count, uh, I mean, the different regions have been able to work on their different uh, consortium, and if maybe they've been able to start even working on a concept on the consortium, because we want, uh, the idea is that next year we want now, the guys who are going to be joining, they already found your already established consortium, so that they just joined that, so that in the next three or four four years, the ambassador, uh, the, you know, the different region of the ambassadors will actually have more stronger voice in, in their different counties and all that so that, that's that's the whole idea why we really emphasize that we need to work on the consortium uh, so that we bring our different organization together and then we continue working together even past uh, the ambassador program because you know from july we'll start recruiting the new cohorts so meaning by by december this first cohort would have been gone and we don't we don't want to lose touch with everyone and what we want to be easy for us to work with you guys through that your different consortiums as well Okay, thank you. That's my little contribution. All right. Thank you so much, Calvin Jodisi, um, in charge of assistant in charge of education program, in charge of LIPAPS at Global Peace Foundation. And um, now back to our ambassadors. Is there anything you'd like to share with us before we start our presentation um, this afternoon? Maybe some few heads up just to say even hi and uh, yeah, tell us how your county is. Just a few, maybe one minute before we start our presentation. Uh, our presentation, Halima will start. I will share uh, her slides. Then we'll have Mombasa and then uh, Nyandarwa. I'm sure not all are going to present because I haven't received feedback from other counties, but even if we have uh two or three it's good for the day and yeah we count uh, our month so just remember to take a screenshot of uh, attending this um of attending this uh this 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 zoom and then you'll upload it as your may assignment so i'll just go through and yeah and acknowledge so just take a screenshot remember take a screenshot and upload it as your may assignment from tomorrow is first uh june We'll be starting training on, on leadership and community development. So back to Ambassador, anything you'd like to share before I welcome uh, Halima? Today, today we don't want to go to do like a stretch, like Mbaka Sakumi Namoja. So if you are able to do this presentation for the next one hour, then it should be also good online so that we also do other things. Thank you. Yes, Philip, go ahead. Hello. Yes, Hi. Philip, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, yes. Uh, good evening, guys. Here in Kajado, we are good. And you are breaking. I can't. I can't hear you. Uh, what you're saying. Okay, Sawa. Um, I think we lost him. Any any yeah. other ambassador who has something to say, Philip? 
Okay, so um well um yeah and from from yes Philip I'm um, I'm saying yes uh back here in Kajiado Okay, so thank you so much, Philip. And uh, yeah, All right. Any other, any other, um, maybe a uh, concern from our ambassador before we welcome Ambassador Halime from Nairobi to make her presentation. All right. Now, just to mention, I'm still following up on the. Um, Basing on what we did in the uh, coastal region, um, Chandaria was so excited and uh, we'll be doing our launch, our uh, 1 million campaign launch at uh, Starehe Girls Center, that is on 12th, just to mark the World Environmental Day, to end the World Environmental Day that's, that is starting on June 5th, that is next Saturday. So um, I was talking to the Alliance Director, Starehe Girls, sorry, Center um, and uh, the, the probabilities that uh, we will be doing something with the girls, launching of the one million campaign, tree planting campaign, and now now from there, once we receive the tree seedlings after our campaign, we'll follow up. We are able to distribute it to other counties. So this launch, I'll just welcome the nearby uh, counties, like let me say Machakos, uh, Kajiado, Nairobi, and Kiambu. So they'll be taking part in this exercise at Alliance Girls. Of course, we'll also talk to our partner, KTN will be there. So just as a heads up and uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated in case of anything, but uh, that's what I'm working on at the moment. So uh, we'll be doing the 1 million campaign at Starehe Girls Center on 12th. That is the other Saturday. So I'm just making preparations just to have something similar to what we did in the coastal region, but we'll be focusing on the fruit trees. So we'll plant very few fruit trees because they say they already have a forest, so they don't want many trees also. So we'll focus on fruit trees. And yeah, so that's what is coming up next, but I'll keep you updated in case of any change. But also for Nairobi, I believe we'll be doing something at Kariobangi just to mark the 5th June, the environmental day. So I believe also we, we can do something, okay. <laughs> so, now, well, I would like to take this chance to welcome Halima. Halima, I'll just I'll share your presentation, and then you can start from there. Karibu Halima, as I share your screen, you can say something on how Nairobi is doing, and yeah. Uh, thank you, fellow ambassadors. It's uh, really a pleasure being with you today. And uh, I'm really honored to uh, actually just uh, engage with all of you. Nairobi, we're doing great. Uh, as uh, Mr. Budoi has just told us, we'll be having a tree launch campaign. We will be having a tree planting uh, event on the 5th of June. So we are hoping that uh, we've been able to learn enough from Mombasa County to make sure that at least it goes as, as successful. And um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, present about Nairobi County and uh, in terms of what we have and just give you an update, especially for the people who've not been to this beautiful county. Uh, first, I'll say Nairobi, as we all know, is the capital city of Kenya. And uh, being the capital city, uh, in terms of uh, ethnicity, it is a bit heterogeneous. Uh, with that, I mean there are different uh, tribes, ranging from Kamba, Kikuyu, Kalenjin, and the minorities as well, such as uh, the Nubian, the Pokot. So, you know, you understand that uh, where there's a capital city, everyone comes on board to be able to, to try to make a living because that is where 
there's abundant resources in terms of um, jobs, in terms of finding a business and things like that. And uh, with this influx of people brings about a heterogeneous nature of a society, which thankfully Nairobi has been able to interact not only with the different counties within, but also nationalities and um, different uh, countries globally. So uh, in Kenya, we, you know, we have the United Nations headquarters and with that comes influx of foreigners and all that. So thankfully Nairobi has been able to give room to such because uh, with the United Nations and things like embassies coming here means that as well, the expatriates that will be around and we've been able to harmonize and be with them and interact with them. Thank you. Please go ahead with the other slide, uh, Mr. Sam Budoi. Uh, so you can see uh, different uh, dances. We see that of Kamba and that of Kikuyu. Uh, I do understand. I, I do understand that different dances. So in Nairobi, we appreciate all this, all these uh, different cultures, and we're able to enjoy and interact with them. And that is the beauty of being in Nairobi. Uh, please go on, Mr. Sam. Uh, so Nairobi, it's uh, popularly known as the green city in the sun. Uh, it has an amazing culture and uh, it's just beautiful because uh, when, you look at, uh, when you look at Nairobi, the different, uh, the different activities, you can see buildings, and you can also see as well, probably you can see like right now, I'm, I'm just standing next to Uhuru Park. I'm in a building called YWCA. I'll just give you just a glimpse of what I'm seeing. And I think I believe it's beautiful. And that's why it's called the green city in the sun. Just take a look. So I hope uh, that gives you a glimpse of the beauty of Nairobi and what it offers. And uh, as well, uh, within Nairobi, there's also this aspect of Matatu culture. Uh, and uh, with Matatu culture, uh, Nairobi has been able to nurture it very well because with Matatu culture comes that beautiful Matatus. When you get into a Matatu from Nairobi, you can see the skyline like I've just shown you. And this is what I'm seeing live. So you can imagine the abundance and uh, the beauty of what Nairobi people are able to view. And um, other than that, there's the Matatu culture. Maybe uh, Mr. Sambudo, you can go to the next slide. Please go to the next slide. Okay, uh, I'll show you the Matatu culture. It's, it's a bit uh, below. So with the Matatu culture, what happens is that uh, there's uh, matatus, which are transportation vehicles, public. And with matatu culture, Nairobi has been able to maybe revamp it and ensure that the matatus look really beautiful. And if you live far away, maybe in Rongai and areas where you'll find music in the matatu, you'll find uh, TVs, which is relaxing. But also there's also a risk with this uh, matatus in terms of how they're driven, which as Nairobi residents, we need to address and ensure that there's safety, comfort and style. So we're hoping to also have other counties emulating such beautiful aspects of our Matatu culture. Uh, as well, uh, Nairobi is home to the Nairobi National Park. Nairobi National Park is um, located uh, in between uh, uh, Langata, and Karen sub counties. So uh, when you go there, it's the only it's the only home where within the city there's a national park. You can imagine the beauty in that, and that means for you to be able to, for if you want to go to just see animals and game, you can be able to have a drive and come back to the city, which is really something that we pride in and we are grateful for for God just giving us this beautiful nature and also just being thankful that it is within our country. And it also brings resources because there's tourism, which is uh, something our economy needs. 
and we're really grateful for that. Please go ahead, uh, Mr. Budoy. Oh yes, this is the Matatu culture that I was uh, talking about. And then in terms of uh, infrastructural developments, uh, Nairobi as compared to the rest of the counties is really developed. Uh, as we know, it's the capital city and that is where most of the economic activities happen. So you'll find good roads, uh, you'll find hospitals, you can see hospitals like the main hospital, Kenyatta National Hospital. So when, um, when people are being referred from other counties, then they come to Kenyatta National Hospital to be treated, which means we have a resource of, uh, in terms of health-wise, and uh, as much as uh, still it, it has not been really well taken care of, we're hoping that we can be the change and we can also ensure that we push as leaders for policies that can ensure that hospitals such as this are top notch and can be able to accommodate all kinds of diseases, including cancer, which can be able to at least get, uh, get beds and machines that can help in that and, and be able to be enough to cater for all these referrals from all these counties. In terms of uh, colleges and universities, there are colleges like the University of Nairobi, which is a top-notch um, university. We're looking at, uh, it's almost above top 100. We have most of the universities in Nairobi at top 100 within Africa, and globally as well, they rate well. So in terms of education, we really, we pride ourselves in being giants of the country. And we think that as much as we are giants, we can be also be able to influence and ensure that we can, we can also other counties to ensure that they also become giants. Um, uh, there's also the different parts which are within the national park and we're thankful for that. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Mr. Budoy. Uh, there is a photo of uh, Kenya Medical Training College and the University of Nairobi. And then in terms of uh, archives and having a whole lot of heritage, we pride ourselves in that because there is uh, certainly so much heritage that uh, we have been able to capture for the country. And you, you can, uh, there's a national museum, there's the archives within within the central business district. Uh, we have the Nairobi Railway Museum and the Karen Blixen Museum. All this, when you go, you can find, you can find the history of uh, things. You can be able to track down and you, as we all know, there's no way you can go forth without looking back. So we need that foundation to know where were we and where are we at the moment to be able to go forward which is a really good thing. And we're also encouraging other counties if they can push for policies to ensure that within their county, are there resources, are there museums, are there aspects of heritage that they can call their own, which they can use to also enhance, uh, enhance tourism, a source of uh, economic uh, income should be really great. Please continue, Mr. Budoy. There's a picture of Karen Blixen Museum. Please go on. Okay, and uh, a good, uh, the, the aspect of the tranquility that you're speaking about is like the parks that are within Nairobi. It is uh, very difficult and especially because nowadays we look at uh, high rising building, that's the in thing. Everyone wants a high rising building. And we're grateful for legends such as uh, the late Professor Wangari Madai, God rest her soul in peace, uh, who have been able to do wonders in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, there's preservation of uh, these parts and buildings are not built on them. So that at least when you're being, when you're within the city, you can look at the tranquility, which is what I've just shown you a couple of few minutes ago, without all these um, initiatives, without people who are as bold and who believe in what they want, there would be no such parks as this. 
So we're really grateful that it is within Nairobi and we're hoping that uh, there will be a crop of leaders who can be able to also emulate the same within their counties and stay strong and advocate for places where people can be able to sit, relax and gain that um, peace of mind that they need to continue with their daily lives. Please go ahead, Mr. Budoy. That is still a part of Uhuru Park. You can see boat riding, which if you haven't come, it's uh, quite affordable. You can come have a, have a boat ride and see how Nairobi looks. And as well, please, but just don't indulge in swimming. So just uh, riding the boat. Please go ahead. Uh, in terms of uh, climate, uh, generally the climate of Nairobi is uh, warm and somewhat cool most of the year. And uh, usually the brightest, uh, the brightest months are usually between December and March. In July and June right now, it's usually very cold, especially July, but uh, during the course of the day, it gets a bit warmer. So uh, when you want to come to Nairobi and you're thinking about coming to Nairobi, think about the months and what you want to do. If uh, probably you want to go for more swims and things like that, you can consider not coming in July. Yes. And um, in terms of uh, sustainable development, uh, Nairobi has, uh, we, 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 our development and uh, social growth has uh, helped uh, in raising the living standards, standard of uh, the people of Kenya in terms of uh, food, shelter, sanitation, good roads and transportation, which is really commendable. But as well, there are, uh, there are few challenges which has led probably to the cropping of, uh, cropping of uh, slums and things like that. Uh, albeit there's uh, things like the Fortune 500 companies, which uh, you see if there's sustainability, there's this infrastructural development, there's uh, peace, then companies, which is usually the 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies, they're able to come to invest in your county. And that is the importance of trying to develop uh, the county. So devolution is something that, um, as uh, county ambassadors, we need to fully embrace and know how we can be able to ensure that we use it to our advantage as, uh, as uh, companies. Because you can imagine like Huawei, IBM, Barclays, General Motors coming to invest within Africa. And then they do not choose any other destination. They choose Kenya and precisely your location. What does it uh, result in? It results to more jobs, it results to just aspects of the infrastructure being better. And uh, it leads to growth, not just of the county, but of the country at large. And just globally, people will be able to have better living standards. So that I truly commend Nairobi and I encourage each and everyone to at least look, up, look up over, try to tap into the aspect of evolution to ensure we are better ambassadors county ambassadors. Please go ahead, Mr. Budui. Uh, that is just a, just a glimpse of what Fortune 500 companies and investors can come do. They can build really great apartments. There's an apartment that um, I've forgotten its name. I'm sorry, but uh, it, it, it was built. It, I'm, I'm not sure if it has been unveiled yet, but it's, uh, it's really high and it's really costly. So I'm sure it's within Upper Hill. And uh, I'm sure that uh, there'll, there'll be so many investors as well who will be coming and trying to see how can we invest in this. And in return, we can build funding. We can be able to get so much out of them. Uh, please go ahead. And uh, as much as we are uh, a county, we also experience challenge. And uh, one of the major challenges when you're coming to Nairobi, which is, uh, it's just a characteristic that is not so appealing is traffic. 
uh, when you're in Nairobi, you have to, to go early because uh, if you're going from somewhere, you need to ensure that you have your time. And with traffic, there's usually very heavy traffic. So place that can take maybe 10, 15 or 30 to 30 minutes can take you almost two and a half hours, which is really unfair. And um, we, we, we are hoping and um, we, we are also looking, we should, as Nairobi County Ambassadors, be able to look for ways to ensure that as county ambassadors, we're able to ensure that how do we solve this uh, problem? There, there have been roads, the roads being built, and we're hoping that uh, these roads are sustainable because people are buying more and more cars. As, uh, as the gap between, as at least the income gap is increasing, as the income of individuals within Nairobi is increasing, and Kenya at large, people are purchasing cars. But then the roads are still the same, and they cannot be able to accommodate people who are buying cars more and more. So also that we are, as ambassadors, especially within Nairobi, we need to look for how to ensure that we can advise and or we can participate in ensuring that uh, at least there's less of traffic. And if you are purchasing, if you are opting for your car, uh, how do you, is it better for you to get something else? And uh, is it really a priority? If it is, yes. And if you have, how, how often should you use it? Because there are people who use it more often instead of using public transport, which could also ease in traffic, I mean. And then the other thing is uh, slums. There's emergence of slums a lot, especially because with, the, with um, the capital city, there's an influx of people coming from rural areas and coming to work. But then uh, considering their pay, how will they be able to pay for this, uh, the cost of living, which is quite high in Nairobi as compared to other counties? How are they able to cater for this? Which, uh, as, uh, as uh, the government, we need to see how to ensure if there will be uh, slum areas, there should be at least cleanliness, there should be affordable housing, and uh, how do we go about it? So those are things that we need to participate in as public and see how we can be able to ensure that at least we're able to positively influence lives. Please go ahead, Mr. Budoi. And um, in terms of uh, shopping experience, um, you see Nairobi being the capital city, it has a lot range of things to be sold and the markets and uh, especially because as well, because of the population. And uh, still there's a high population of individuals who cannot be able to afford. So there are markets that are everywhere. And uh, if you compare to other counties, Nairobi has a market that uh, the number of people who are willing to buy your goods are many. So things are here. So there's toy, there's toy market, which is in Kibera, is, which is in Kibra, and um, this is uh, almost like an open market that sells clothes, mostly clothes and mitumba clothes. So which is that? And then again, when we're talking about mitumba, then something else we need to address. Why mitumba? Don't we have other clothes, Kenyan clothes and Kenyan brands? Because I appreciate, especially when I go to, which is another shopping, there's Isli, which has uh, clothes, but then sometimes you might find as much as there's imported ones, there are people who are making clothes on site, which is really commendable. And I think if we can be able to engage in such conversations, why are we taking clothes mitumba from a different country to come wear them when we can be able to produce our own clothes, we can be able to produce our own things and sell and still get an income. Other markets include like the Kikomba markets and uh, many more. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Boy. So that's uh, just a glimpse of how they look. Uh, please go on. And um, uh, just on the left, there's uh, the Maasai market, the, the picture which uh, I think people bring their wares, African wares, which is uh, really good 
because uh, usually when you come, I think it's usually Saturdays, if I'm not wrong, um, you'll get people from different places. They come with their wares, nice wares, African. You know, you come, if you're coming from, you have the Kikois, you have the Kikapos, you have things like that. You have the Maasai beads and they sell them. And with that, mostly there's a, the tourists flock the area. So they're able to get that income. They're able to participate. They're able to show the world, this is what Africa produces. And if we have more of this, it would be really great. So these are avenues of um, things and areas that uh, it needs a discussion so that at least we can be able to see as much as Africa, we're not, can't we be producers? Are we only consumers? Can't we, if we can't, yes, we can't produce aeroplanes. Can't we produce just a piece, just an underwear to wear, you know, just something, just a hairband or a scarf. So those are things that, those are conversations that are very healthy. And with that, we can hope for probably things that can crop up and innovations and things like that. Please go ahead, Mr. Budoy. And uh, in terms of food, there's that one specialty. Because you see, when you're coming to Nairobi, there are different cultures. So we have Gizeri there, we have this, we have Mukimo, we have all that. So Nairobi has a whole host of that. But there's one food that everyone likes. And with that food, it's called Nyamachoma. And Nyamachoma is uh, really liked by everyone. And it's considered, it's Nairobian food. It's not Kamba food. It's not, so you'll find it everywhere. And with Nyamachoma, usually, it's liked but by people who probably go out when you're going with your friends somewhere. So when you're coming to Nairobi, if you haven't been here already, or if you have, but still have not tasted Namachoma, especially when you're with your friends, you know, when you eat alone, then it's good, but it's not as good as when you eat with your friends. So you just come, try the Namachoma with just a bit of ugali. Don't come and eat too much ugali, then you don't feel the taste of Namachoma. Just a bit of ugali and uh, with your friends and a bit of laughter is good enough. You'll taste a delicacy that is out of the world, that is Nairobian, and at least you can be able to have a, a piece of Nairobi. Thank you. And uh, please go ahead, Mr. Budoy. Now, the nyamachoma being roasted, basically meat can be beef or uh, it can be lamb or any meat that you eat. It's just uh, basically, is it roasted? Yes, on uh, charcoal, which is really, really good. When you get, especially with a uh, kachumbari, which is a mixture of uh, onions, tomatoes, and a bit of uh, uh, spices. Please go on, uh, Mr. Budoy. And uh, in terms of uh, the nightlife, uh, some, Somewhat, if you consider Nairobi is kind of a 24-hour economy, especially in the weekends when you go to the CBD without the curfew and before COVID-19, when you go to Nairobi, you can see lights everywhere. You can see the buzzing. It's a buzzing city. You can hear the music from different angles. And uh, the nightlife is really good, but uh, also there comes with pro possibly risks and all that. Because with risks, that there's the aspect of people being too drunk, the aspect of prostitution, which needs to be addressed as well. So Nairobi is good. It's a, it's a, it's a city under the sun. But uh, be careful, especially in terms of um, the nightlife. Uh, as well, be careful of people because uh, when it's the city as well, people are different. So you take care of yourself, you know who you're dealing with, because there's that a bit of an impersonal interaction. So you cannot be able to know someone well. So take your time when you're knowing someone, come enjoy yourself, have fun and be safe. So I think uh, that is the end of my presentation. And I want to tell you, thank you and uh, you're welcome. Nairobi is good and uh, Karibu sana Nairobi. Asante. Wow, Karibu Sana Nairobi. And you are being reminded of Gopa Nairobi. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Halima, for such a
a wonderful presentation. You know, Halima representing Nairobi. It's actually, Nairobi has a lot of history. So Shambhala, Maui, I don't know what. So we have all those kinds of history. Now, um, wow. OK, next we let's move to Joseph has requested to present the last one. So yeah, I think I should request uh, Nyandarwa. Is your presentation ready? I had the uh, Calvin. Calvin, is your presentation ready for Nyandarwa County? I want to see the amazing Nyandarwa food. Calvin, is your presentation ready? Okay. Um, let me see. Right. Since Calvin is not ready, Joseph, are you able to present or? Uh, So, Samuel. So, should I share your screen or you are going to do that? You can share. Okay, share. Just, just give me a few minutes as you continue to. Just a minute. Let me get your slides. You can proceed, Joseph, as, uh, as I prepare your slides. Okay. So from county 047 to county 001. Joseph, go ahead. Sante sana hamjambo nyote. I'll present using Swahili. Kwa jina ni Joseph Nazareth, uh, ambassador county Sufuri Sufuri moja, ambayo ni Mombasa county. Na katika county logo yetu, kuna neno watu tunapenda kutumia utangamano kwa maendeleo yani kwa sababu gani kwamba ni mji ambao umebuniwa zamani na lakini wafauti tofauti wa matabaka mbalimbali Samuel kwako Joseph, kidogo tunakupoteza sijui kama ah uh, mji wa Mombasa una historia kidogo kubwa lakini kwa mwaka 900 uh, ni Ado Domini kwa wale wasomi wa Kiingereza na Kigiriki Na mji huu ulikuwa na watawala wawili. Kwanza ndiyo mji wa kwanza katika fuo za bahari hindi kutawa na mtawala wake wa kwanza kiitwa jina mwanamkisi um I wa kongoe wengi najua mnajua kama so la ilikuwa wanati wenye kwa kike ya 13 wakita tenashara talata na wapili alivita 
alikuwa ni mtawali wa kisiwani mtaita mbidi katikati ya mji kuanzia makuu mpaka na mtatu Joseph um I think we are losing you uh maybe your internet is not okay Yeah I think maybe if um maybe we can because uh, he had requested if we can present among the last to the last presentation so he, so that he can work on uh, his presentation or rather his internet maybe we can just stop sharing then we we get back to him later sorry joseph we lost you and yeah i think even is is not on the call all right then uh, okay who else is ready um kelvin from nyandarwa is your presentation ready or uh, Nakuru, Messi, or Douglas. I saw Douglas around. Messi, are you having a presentation? Or we move to, I have a presentation for Marsabit. Augustine, you okay? Uh, if I can share your presentation or... Uh... Augustine, if you can hear me. Calvin, is your presentation ready? Okay, Calvin also is not on the call. Okay. Augustine, can you hear me from my subit? Would you like? Uh, okay. Just a minute, just a minute. Hmm. Just see. Augustine, can I can I request that you present maybe in the interest of time so that we oh just of your back. Um are you able to continue the presentation or uh, we allow someone else to present? No, kindly allow someone else to present Afadali Kitamboni sort out because so, the internet in the internet is Ah, uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, Calvin. I'm um, just in the meantime, my network is okay. Augustine, are you able to present? Um, I can see also Nyandara Calvin is requesting if we can give them some few minutes to set up their network connection. Philip also from Kajado has requested to make some few adjustment on his presentation, Kajado County. Augustine, maybe if I can hear from you, I have your presentation. Are you ready to present so that I can share the screen? Augustine Marsabit.
Um, Masi Nakuru, did you have any presentation? Did you do any presentation on your with your group, Nakuru County? Yes, Augustine, Hello. can you can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Augustine. Yes, uh, yes, Samuel, I'm getting you. Yes, can you yeah. can I share can I share your yes. presentation? Yeah, you okay. can do that. Uh Ado is going to share. Oh, Ado is going to share the screen. Yeah. No, not the screen. The presentation. The presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Ado, just Give me a few minutes. Let me share your screen. Let me share your presentation in a few. Um, let me. Ah, Hado is around. Okay, perfect. Let me share my subit presentation. Um, hmm, just trying to check here. Okay, good. Okay. Let's try to expand this. Okay. So other other maybe you can proceed. Hello everyone. Hello, yes, we can hear. Just try to raise your voice a little bit. Okay. Okay, proceed. You have Hello. ten minutes present. Hello. I hope everyone knows that Marsabe County from Northeastern Kenya. And it's a, it's a county well known for conflict. And despite that, there is so much that is hidden behind, behind what the media, behind whatever the media always cover that's conflict, conflict, conflict. But there's so much that you can see when you travel to that part of the country. And this, so they, we have like four major, around five major tribes, which, cover, which mm -hmm. covers Marsabit County. And we have like nine more minor tribes. And I think everyone sees on the list. And we have so many, and as we all know, Marsabit is the cradle of mankind because of so many historical coverage that you have within the country. Very beautiful cultural norms that we have, the cultural values that we have in the county, which you only see if you to this side of the country. And we have so much linguistic diversity based on the cultural norm, the cultural values, the entertainment traditional songs which is done mostly within the cultural festival festivals are done once a year the relay tamburu again another person and these are the the cover the Gabra cultural attires. That's the way they wear during the cultural festivals. But there are nine more tribes with all of them having their own cultural or traditional attires. And we have so many ceremonies at the festivals that normally happens within the year. For the Rendila and the Samburu and Gabra, they are 
move the same. They do have the the Rendile Moran circumcision, which happened recently. That's done after 14 years, every 14 years. And before that 14 years, no Rendile boys go to that stage of circumcision. You have to wait for that 14 years. That stage is a kind of rite of passage. That's done after 14 years. If you are not the ones who, are, who did it there, you have to wait for another 14 years for you to be circumcised. And then they govern the Rendile traditions that happens like dry Saia. Normally the weddings, they do the wedding ceremony dry Saia, which is April, May, and September. And if not a, that three months, even if you get married, you have to wait for those three, for April, May, and September for, for you to do your main wedding. And then there's something called Saria, which is a must for them to do dry Saia. And then the Boranas, they, they do have their own cultural norms, which are done. It's a rite of passage for you for firstborn son naming. Like they name their firstborn sons that is specifically done at a certain time, which is called Gubi. And we have the Gadamojis ceremonies, which is the rite of passage from being from elder to the younger ones. Like they pass the leadership from the elder to their sons or the youngsters and mostly done after eight years and if you are appointed as a leader this year you have to lead them for eight years for you to pass it to the, the other younger generations and then they have every tribe have their own norms and that's the what makes Marsabet so beautiful and as I said like there's so much you can see if you talk to the county we have the Marsabe National Park and the reserve, which has creators like Lake Paradise, Gok Choba. There are so many, around five creators that we have. But Lake Paradise is like a major landmark in Marsabe County. It's always, it's evergreen. It's located in the center of Marsabe Forest. It's evergreen and it has so many livestock, it's not livestock, the wild animals around there. So if you, it's, there's something great that which is in Marsabit County mm -hmm. that everyone can come and see. Please scroll up. And Lake Paradise is a home to many animals, wild beasts. And this is Marsabed Lodge. This Marsabed, yeah, a shallow well, somewhere Mar around Marsabed Lodge. This is on, Marsabed Lodge is on your way to Lake Paradise. Mm, we have Lake Turkana at Ileret. This is the The part where it merges towards the Illyrite, it's in Marsabit County, the far end around the border. One of the beauties of Marsabit County. And we have the Talbi, De Talbi Desert. This is the sand dune in Talbi Desert. It's not a Dubai where people normally go. We have like, it's, it's beautiful. We have like the, the Talbi safaris. There are so many safaris that come here of late. So I guess if you guys take a trip to this area, you will enjoy it. This is the Talbi sand dune. And this is the oasis at Kalacha in Salbi Desert. It's so beautiful. Please scroll up, Dubai. This is the, the it's somewhere around in Gurnit, Gurnit River. And then we have 
Gurnet River, it's almost close to Mount Kula, where, where people go for just to freshen up during the weekend. Just go relax your mind, do your things, take your time off work. And then we have some heroes like Abdullah Jirma Mude, Bunaya Dochi, Agabila. These are the musicians from the county and they are well known. And like Abdullah Jirma, I guess, like most of the people know. If you search online, you can get to know more about them. It's, they, their song is about the history, about the culture, about the beauty of this county, like Ab Abdullah Zirma, about the history of Kenya. There's a song about that, the, the historical, the, the, those people who died during colonial, colonialism. The song about that, like so much about the culture and what's happening recently. And like Dr. Godana, Dr. Adi Godana is one of the MPs of Northern from 19, 1986. Yeah. So he's one of the well known heroes in this county. And he has done a lot and made major impact on life of the people around this area. And then we have a few heroines like the Habanoye. This is a lady who led people in during the historical time and she was so powerful in that the 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 men do bought him like they obeyed her and she dig a hole in the underground and put that the the cow those skin from the nini we call it itil in our language they place it over the hall and then she told them to sit on the on heat. And they all went into the hall and they got buried. <laughs> and she buried all the men then. She was so powerful. And then the the those are Akina Galgal we did Those are the women, the powerful women in the country, those who had impact on girl child and some other project within the community. And then we have some, so many food types. Like we didn't, I didn't get the photo for that. The mist, there's so much like the Kita, Ukurfa, Anjera. Anjera, I guess like most of people who go to East Lee have ever got the taste of it, but there's a way you can cook the traditional one. And there's so much you can get to learn if you come to this side of the county. Ini, this is called nyiri nyiri. It's a meat, but so sweet. It's cooked, uh, when it's cooking, like the pure meat, and this is the picture of the Nigeria. Those are the few that I can share, but there's so much you can get to learn if you come to this side of the county. And there's, apart from this, like there's no, this beauty, but we have the challenge, the only challenge we have is conflict, which is currently like it has become worse, like just the gunshot every evening, not knowing like where it's coming from, just everyone running for their safety like today morning like we had like five border border guys missing we don't know where they are people are saying they were killed just killing what the butchery it has become a norm in this area but i hope one day it will end that's the matter you can say but the recommendation i have is like the, as the, the Global Peace Foundation, what, what can we do together to solve this issue, which has become like a norm. If, like every morning, there's no, no day you wake up in the morning, like not hearing like someone was killed last night. A friend of yours is having seen like since last night, and then the next day, you must get like, 
amekufa ameuliwa and you never so i guess this barbaric culture will come to an end despite that we have so much so much opportunity in this area mm -hmm. yeah that's the much i can say i can say about this country oh uh, maybe i can add something there's so much someone can say about it yes yes i guess i feel free to to share and add more about my subject county please thank you thank yeah, you so much that, and yes so, thank you so much thank you uh, i want to just chat about the recommendation Hello. Hello. Proceed. Proceed. Yes. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm saying just I'm I'm trying to add about the recommendation. Uh, for example, uh, the peace building. Uh, like now we are we are planning something on peace with my sister. Uh, at the end of this uh, month. I'll also another recommendation is about the economic empowerment of vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable in the in the in the county. So also uh, other things about the climate change adaptation measure, whereby we are trying. Like for example, I'm working on something on the Moran, uh, regreening, and uh, it's really a recommendation whereby I'm I'm asking maybe it's very important if uh, the ambassadors maybe they can able to make this contribution for us so that we can make it to to happen so that's what uh, i would then to to share thank you wow thank you so much um yeah. Rustin, thank you so much Ado, for the wonderful presentation the challenges sorry about what is happening in your county and i'm sure one day uh something will will, will come out and uh, we keep on praying that uh will one day have a better um, have a better uh, country you know together with all this synergy that we are creating with the county ambassadors i believe something uh, one day will happen and uh, we'll continue supporting the little that we can and where we can possibly uh, talk to our partners and see where they can support thank you so much uh nyandarwa is your presentation ready Please let's um, let's observe time. It's only ten minutes presentation, so they can, can allow other counties to to make their presentation. Masi, did you make any presentation uh, for Nakuru, or you guys you decided to get zero for this month? No problem. Um, Kelvin Yandaro, is your presentation ready? Yandaro County. Philip Ajado. Hello. Oh, yes. Kevin, uh, proceed. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yes. Proceed. OK. Uh, I want to share, to share my screen. Can I do that? Uh, Sam. Hello, Sam. Yes, Hello. yes, yes, Kelvin, I've made you the co-host. You can proceed. I'm sure you can share your screen now. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I've been up and out, and my network has been disturbing me here and there. And uh, our presentation was uh, not quite complete, but I think we can I can be able to run through what we have what we have to know about the great county of potatoes and milk. Now, Nyandaro County is uh, located in is, is uh, the, it was one of the former provinces in the central province. The larger central province was divided and uh, we became a county in 2010 as all others. Uh, it's a county in the former central province of Kenya and we have a capital city. Most of us knows as the capital of Nyandarwa as Nyahururu, 
but uh, Nyahururu was taken by Laikipia County, and our, our headquarters is a small town known as Old Kalao. And uh, our population is not that much, but it is a lot when it comes to voting, because you are the Duraku Durakus that you hear people saying about, talking about. Uh, Nyandarwa, in, in terms of culture, Nyandarwa County is not an origin of any Kikuyus or we are people who migrated from our ancestral land. That is uh, Nyeri, Moranga, and Kiambu. That is where the Kikuyu people we were told that they originated from there. So as in Nyandaro, we are migrants from these regions. But we carry with it our Kikuyu, our Kikuyu culture from Nyeri. Some, we, when you come to Nyandaro, we understand the, the different uh, pronunciation, literally the, present, the, uh, the pronunciation of the Kikuyu. Some were from Nyeri, Kiambu, and Muranga. Uh, uh, that's why I'm saying Nyandaro has no origin inhabitants. Most of us shifted from our ancestral lands. In terms of, uh, of uh, maintaining our culture, we have a dance uh, 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 commonly known as Mwomboko. Mwomboko is the main uh, Kikuyu. E even if the people of Nyeri who will, who will present, they, I am sure they mention about the Mwomboko dances. That is the pride of the Kikuyu culture. And uh, when, uh, when we talk about other tribes, the Kikuyu tribe in Nyandaro is almost 99%. We have Kalenjins and uh, Luyas taking about uh, the, the remaining 1%. And this is the, 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 when you see these people in, we have the Kikuyu Council of Elders. This is the official attire of the Kikuyu Council of Elders. Now, uh, nowadays is known as in Kikuyu, Kiyama Kiyama. Uh, 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 Kiyama Kiyama means that it is the council of truth. And this is the attire of the, the, those councils and the Moboka dancers. Uh, in terms of safari destinations in Nyandarwa, we don't have many, many, uh, many destinations, but we have among the best. One of them is the Abadea Ridges. The Abadea Ridges, which, uh, which uh, is the home of the Abadea Maumau Caves. Uh, it was. It is allegedly the Mau Mau coined the war in 1952 uh, in Abadea ridges, just above an area known as Shamata. And also we have Lake Olbolosat, the only fresh water lake in central Kenya, and the mother of uh, Levi Wasanyiro, which uh, goes all the way to Isiolo, up to the Rodian Swamp. We also have, we also share with our county, like Kipia County, the, Zom, the Domson Falls. It is a great uh, safari destination, a place where people can come and relax. Uh, nowadays, they are having camel riding, horse riding, among other, other pic picnic trips that uh, people can enjoy. And, and, and as a result of this, we are having uh, hotels that are coming up, uh, we have in Nyahururu, which is, uh, I'm mentioning Nyahururu and Laikipia because we share, we almost share the same, uh, we are just the same people. Uh, we have the Panari Resort in, in Nyahururu recently, recently flagged by the president. And uh, that is a great, great uh, destination place that uh, maybe people from uh, other counties, say Nairobi, and Bachakos can, can come and visit when times allows. Uh, type of food. Now the type of food in Nyandarwa is one and everyone knows that it is potato. Although we are not the leading county producing in terms of potatoes, we are, we are behind Meru and Nakuru. Uh, Nyandarwa prides itself as a county that is that leads in terms of milk production in the whole country in the whole country and uh, and that in that aspect is a great challenge because we lead in milk production yet we don't have even milk coolers we don't have uh, we, we don't have these big 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 uh, kcc industries say brookside we don't have what we do is just produce and sell to to, to other counties where we have these already 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 de uh, developed uh, companies for milk processing. 
uh, the staple food in the county 018 is githeri. Githeri is the simple food that we take we take in our homes because we grow subsistence uh, maize and subsistence maize means that we grow food uh, food crops. Githeri, the maize that we grow is only for us. We don't do large large scale farming like like say you, you, that happens in Transoia and Kiricho and among other counties. But uh, that, that, that's how we come up with the githeri as our main staple food, coupled with now we are among good producers of potato and potato and cabbages and githeri go, on, go hand in hand. Uh, among the heroes in, in, in our counties, in our county, we have one, we, we, we have two who are commonly known to everyone, uh, especially those of us who did history in our high schools. We have uh, the famous freedom fighter, Dedan Kemadi. Uh, Dedan Kemadi hailed from Kinangop, which is one of the sub county in Nyandara County. And it is believed that he was the, 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 the brave arm of Mau Mau that liberated the country from the jaws of colonialism, or he is the man behind the Mau Mau uh, re rebellion. And, uh, and, and also JM, uh, Dedan Kemadi, is believed that uh, he was the rightful heir to the president in 1963, but uh, he was uh, betrayed by a fellow Kikuyus, and uh, that's how we lost him. Another one is we have a very famous MP, former, former MP, and may his soul continue resting in peace, known as Josiah Mwangi Karioki, or famously known as JM Karioki. JM was an, an MP for Nyandaro North. Uh, currently, it is Daragua constituency, where I hail from. Uh, he was a fierce reader who it is believed one time when the president came to, to for a fundraising in Nyandarwa, he economically challenged the president by producing a lot of, uh, by giving more than the president. And from that was 1975. He didn't last more than two weeks. It, he was, his bones was found in Gong Forest. And the first, those are the images. The first image on my left, that is JM Karaoke. The second one is the famous uh, Dedan Kimadi. The third one, the third one is the famous uh, Kamau Wanjiro. Kamau Wanjiro was from Nyandarwa, who won the Beijing. He, he won the Beijing uh, 2008 Beijing Marathon. He was a record breaker. And unfortunately, he became so much engulfed in uh, rich issues, and uh, it was believed that he took his life, or it is still alleged that he was killed in Nyauru town. Another one we have uh, a famous artist right now who is uh, taking our air on TVs and radios with a showcase known as Samido. Samido is from a constituency known as Jorok. And uh, we we pride ourselves as uh, as uh, as uh, producers of such a great talent. Maybe some of us may may not know him because he plays the Kikuyu music. But uh, in, in in the Kikuyu land or in the central Kenya, he is among the the leading musicians. We have others like uh, we know some of the, the DJ Fatsos. We we have another one known as Machete. So so those are some of the known celebrities in Nyandarwa that are currently overshadowing all the other celebrities that we know. In terms of, uh, in terms of challenges that are, uh, Mr. Samuel, I have not included here, but I will, before I share this one, I will include them. Uh, the challenges that we face mainly in Nyandarwa is political administratively. Uh, because right now, everyone is uh, seeing Nyandarwa in their TVs or hearing them in their radios. Uh, seeing them trending in some of these uh, social media platforms, we have uh, political battles between the the nation, the Nyandarwa County Assembly and the the, the Nyandarwa County Executive. So uh, these are these are some of the issues that derail the development. Like they have stalled the the development of a, of a of a potato cooling plant, which ultimately will help the farmers fail from the upper part of Naragua, Shamata, the Kinago people who are great farmers of potatoes. 
in this uh, in this when when we don't have a place to store our potatoes or cabbages uh, to translate to direct loss to the farmers another thing is a poor road network in Nyandarwa, if i can give an example in my constituency in my constituency we only have uh, a constituency of uh, about 96000 uh, people in terms of population we only have about 10 kilometers of tarmac only. So, so mobility of our goods, it's very challenging and very difficult. I, I think uh, in, in my recommendation, I will include that as the Group of Peace uh, Foundation, we need to sensitize our people because if you, there is uh, some places that you can go and uh, those people are just comfortable the way they are they need someone not from there to tell them that you should not be comfortable so i think the the platform the group of peace is the is among the the best platforms that you can have to at least try to enlighten our people on because on uh, because we have uh, we have been protected by our constitution on in terms of uh, our information sharing and stuff we can enlighten them and see if in the near future we can at least change and uh, be among the civilized uh, constituencies in this world. And uh, uh, kindly, I'm sorry for the few, few presentation, but uh, I'm, I'm working on it as we talk. And uh, Mr. Samuel, you get this in due in just some few minutes. We, 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 did, we, we are looking forward to get 100% for, from this presentation. Thank you. Wow, wow. That, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the presentation, by the way. It's, uh, you have really uh, brought out the entire you know, picture of how um, Nyandarwa looks like. Yeah, from the food, uh, the culture, it's so amazing. And I think I really like it personally. And also the ambassadors who have joined, um, I'm sure they have really liked what you have presented. Thank you so much, um, Kelvin from Nyandarwa. You know, that was so powerful and, you know, nice uh, presentation from your county. Thank you so much. Now, I would I just like to welcome again uh, County 001, um, uh, Mombasa. We had a little challenge with uh, his network, Ambassador Joseph Nazareth. Please, maybe if you can um, share your presentation or I'll share your presentation so that you can continue with your presentation. Um, uh, Calvin, if you can stop sharing your screen, maybe. Uh, I think I have stopped there. Eh? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Joseph? Uh, Joseph, yes. Joseph, can I? Yes, Samuel. Can I put Yes. Uh, uh, now, now you Ruxa, are Ruxa, <laughs> presentation <laughs> <laughs> presentation Asante sana watafute kamusi waweke karibu. Swadakta swadakta kakangu. Okay, I tunaendelea pale ile page ya mwisho ama unaanza upya? Sababu saa hii naona ume unasikika vizuri. Aanza upya tu. Fresh ya yeah. ndio hiyo basi. Bidi kwa kwa. Ah, hamjambo tena. Hamjambo tena ndugu na dada zangu. Uh, kwa jina ni Joseph Nazareth, uh, ambassador wa mji wa Mombasa ambayo ni sufuri sufuri moja Mombasa County anawakaribisha katika hafla hii ndogo ya kuwajulisha kuhusu kaunti yangu na ningependa kutumia lugha ya Kiswahili kwa sababu mji wangu na enzi na kuithamini lugha ya Kiswahili. Aa, na wakaribisha muomba tani nami hadi tamati. Karibuni. Samuel Loud and clear. Endelea, Aya. Joseph. Kama, kama munavuona mbeleni ni logo ya Mombasa County. Uh, logo hii uh, 
ina uh, rangi za kupendeza tofauti tofauti lakini siri ilipobuniwa katika hii logo ni kwamba ilitaka iangaze vitu ambavyo vinaigusa Mombasa kwa mfano rangi ya samawati kuna zile pembe wa wengi wanaokuja kutoka miji tofauti tofauti huja kuangalia zile pembe pembe zile zilitengenezwa mwaka 1953 Uh, katika kumuenzi Malkia mdogo ambaye ni Malkia Margaret ambaye ni dada wa Malkia Elizabeth na pia kuna uskani ule wa chombo cha bahari ini ambaye chombo chenyewe ni semekana kwamba sisi ndio wa kwanza tulioko karibu na na bahari ku, kupata miale ya jua kwa hivyo ndio katika logo yetu kuna ule mwanga ule wa jua wa asubuhi sana Aa, kuna chini kidogo aa, kuna rangi tofauti tofauti lakini katika hiyo nembo kuna maneno yameandikwa utangamano kwa maendeleo. Kwa sababu gani maneno haya yaliwekwa katika hii nembo yetu ni kwamba uh, watu ni wengi wanaokuja Mombasa kuja kufanya vitu mbalimbali mbali. lakini katika ule ukwasi wetu wa tamaduni sisi ni watu wa karimu na waungwana. Nikisema watu wa karimu na waungwana ni kwamba tunapokea watu tofauti tofauti na makabila tofauti tofauti na katika hii nembo kuna wanyama baharini wawili wazuri najua kwa kizungu mtawaita seahorse lakini kwa Kiswahili wanaitwa faharasi bahari au kwa ile lugha sahihi kabisa wanaitwa kwazi ama furukombe kwa hivyo tunaenzi kwamba tupo baharini na tunaenzi viumbe walioko baharini. Samuel tusongea. Mji wetu una historia, historia pana, historia ndefu ya zaidi ya miaka zaidi ya elfu moja mia tano. A, mji wetu uliweza kuvumbuliwa mwaka wa mia tisa. A, na huu mji ndio mji wa kwanza ambao uko katika fukwe za bahari hindi na visiwa vilivyoko tofauti tofauti kuwa na mtawala wa kwanza wa kike akiitwa mwana mkisi ambaye ndiye muasisi ama mwanzilishi wa mji wa Kongoea wengi mnajua Kongoea kama soko lakini pale Kongoea wapo waanzilishi walioanza ule mji na makazi kufanya pale na pia kukawa kuna mtawala wa pili akiitwa Shem Vita ambapo huyu alikuwa akitawala maeneo ya kisiwani nikisema kisiwani ni kuanzia Kibarani mpaka Mamangina mpaka Baxton hicho ndo kilikuwa kiitwa Kisiwa na alikuwa akiitwa Shem Vita na Kisiwani kulikuwa kiitwa Kisiwa cha Mvita maana katika miaka ya nyuma au kisoma historia kisiwa hichi kiliingiliwa na watu tofauti tofauti sasa katika kule hali ya kujitetea ilikuwa wanakwenda vitani sana ndio jina la shehe mvita na pia Mombasa ilikuwako na waasisi wake makabila ambayo yalikuwako kabla hata historia ianze kuandikwa na ile inayofundishwa katika vitabu na mtaala wa elimu kidogo ina tofauti na kinzano Mombasa ilikuwa na makabila yake. Kwa mfano Tangana, Wajomvu, Wachangamwe, hao ndio waasisi walikuwa katika mji wa Mombasa na lugha yao inafanana na Kiswahili. Lakini katika kuandika ile historia ikachanganywa kwamba wao ni waswahili waliozaana kutokana na Waarabu na Wabantu lakini watu wakitoka Shungwa ya miaka ile waliwapata hawa wenyeji wakiwa tayari wako Mombasa. Kwa mfano watangana 
walikuwa wanaishi ile sehemu ya sasa inaitwa mapembeni docks ambapo ni kuanzia zile pembe za ndovu na ganjoni yote na mbaraki ndio walikuwa wakiishi watangana wajomvu wao walisonga upande wa jomvu na changamwe wakawa na ndugu zao wa changamwe kisha kukawa na watu wa mvita ambao walikuwa wakikaa kisiwani kulikuwa kisha kuna watu ambao wakikaa eneo na lokaamimi la kisauni ni watu tofauti tofauti kati ya yale makabila mbili ambayo yalikuwa yana ungana pamoja kufanya mji wa Mombasa kabla watawala tofauti tofauti kukumbuka kwamba tulikuwa kwa na Portuguese tulikuwa kwa na Waarabu tulikuwa kwa na Waomani tulikuwa kwa na Waparsia kabla mtawala wa Kiingereza kuja miaka ya elfu moja, mia saba mwisho mwisho na elfu moja, mia nane. Kwa hivyo kwa sababu ya a, 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 kutawaliwa na mkoloni wakati ule makabila yakazidi kuongezeka tukawa na watu kutoka bara Hindi ambao tunawaita Wahindi tukawa na watu kutoka a, a, a China tukawa na watu kutoka Middle East ambao ni Waomani, Waparsia wote walikuja katika kutaka vitu tofauti tofauti wapo wengine ambao walikuja kuja kufanya biashara wengine kuweka makazi wengine walikuja kusoma maana ikikumbukwa kwamba Mombasa ndiyo ilikuwa muasisi wa chuo kikuu cha kwanza cha ufundi sasa hicho chuo kinaitwa Technical University of Mombasa lakini kikiasisiwa miaka ya zamani mwisho mwisho wa karne ya 18 kilikuwa kikiitwa Arab Boys Technical School uh, kiko pale Chuda. Twende mbele. Uh, Mombasa tuna uh, tamaduni zetu na itikadi zetu ni nyingi. Uh, tuna Uswahili, tuna Uarabu, tuna Upadja, tuna Uhindi kuna Uingereza na kidogo kwa sababu tunazidi kupanuka na kukumbatia teknolojia kwa hivyo kuna ule usasa unaoingia ambapo katika usasa tunaona katika majengo yetu yanayojengwa hivi sasa hizi Mombasa ni majengo ya ghorofa ya kwenda juu kuna teknolojia tofauti tofauti mavazi yetu pia yamebadilika ambayo ni tofauti Uh, pia kuna chakula chetu uh, ambacho wengi ambao wanakuja Mombasa na natumai baada ya leo nitapata wageni wengi ambao wanataka kuja kuzuru mji wetu nitawapokea kwa mikono miwili chakula ambacho watu wanakipenda sana wakija mji huu ni biryani kuna shawarma uh, na vyakula mbali mbali tofauti na katika A, katika pia kujenga kwetu tumekumbatia tamaduni tofauti tofauti tuna a, Uingereza ndani yetu katika majengo yetu kwa sababu Mombasa ina makanisa Mombasa ina misikiti Mombasa ina masinagogi ina vitu tofauti tofauti kwa mfano ni mkono wa mwanadada huo umechorwa na hiyo ni piko na hina na mapambo tofauti tofauti kama pete na bangili za mkononi Aa, hapa chini kuna mnara huu ku mnara ni wakengee ambao najua wengi hamtaufahamu lakini wanaopita pale lights huo ndio ule mnara wa slaveted ambapo mimi ni mmoja wa vizalia wa watumwa ambao walikuwa mababu zangu wakiwekwa hapa chini ya hiyo kengele na huo mnara wakingoja ku, kuuzwa na kupelekwa katika mataifa mbalimbali mbali, katika ule mzunguko mzima wa biashara ya utumwa na lugha zetu ni, ni nyingi sana ambazo ziko Mombasa kuna Kiswahili asilia na kuna Kiswahili ambacho sasa kinaboreshwa kwa sababu ya mtaala wa elimu na Kiswahili asilia kina 
lahaja tofauti tofauti ni nyingi sana kuna kimvita kuna kipemba kuna kisiu kuna kitangana zinajalizia katika ile lugha ya Kiswahili ukiangalia kwamba lugha kila siku inazidi kuboreshwa basi sisi kama mji sisi kama watu wa mji wa Mombasa lugha yetu pia inazidi kuboreshwa tusonge mbele sana Mahali mnakopenda sana kuja ameona hapa nimewekea pembe za ndovu uh, kama nilivyotaja awali historia ya hizi pembe zimejengwa kutokana na vyuma kushukuru ujio wa Malkia Margaret uh, kuna mama ngina waterfront uh, juzi juzi iliweza kukarabatiwa na ndani ya ile mama ngina waterfront kuna museum ya Swahili culture iko pale ndani mwaka huu iliweza ku, ku, kuandaa sherehe za kina mama za annual uh, women's day na ina mafunzo mbali mbali na vitu mbali mbali vya asili ya kipwani na ya Kiswahili wengi mnakuja mnapenda kwenda Pirates Beach ambayo inaitwa Jomo Kinyata Public Beach pia kuna Old Town ambayo ni mji wa kale kuanzia pale Treasury Square ambapo iko ofisi ya governor mpaka kule chini iliko for Jesus songe mpaka bondeni kuna ya kilifi kwa wale ambao kidogo wameweza kuutalii mji na kuuzunguka kisha kuna for Jesus ambayo ndio ngome kongwe ya zamani iliweza kujengwa mwaka 1573 kisha tunayo bandari ya zamani ambayo bandari hii ya zamani bado inafunga majahazi na ngalawa tofauti tofauti zinazotoka zile njia za zamani za biashara zinazotoka India, Persia zikileta uh, zikileta vitu tofauti tofauti kiwemo uh, viungo kama karafu, pilipili manga, koma manga, iliki, mdalasini vyote vinakuja na hivi sasa wa, wamezidi kupanuka kwamba wanaruhusu watalii kuingia katika a, a, bandari ile ya zamani kuangalia a, a, ile vitu vinavyo vinavyokuja katika mji wa Mombasa na pia wanaruhusu sasa kuangalia a, 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 majengo yale ya mji wa kale kwa mfano tunao msikiti wa kwanza kabisa uliweza kujengwa ni mwaka 1500 mbili ukiitwa msikiti Almandri uko na tunayo pia ile station ya kwanza kituo cha kwanza cha polisi nchini Kenya mkoloni alipokuja mwaka 1800 bado jengo hilo linasimama na majengo mengine tofauti tofauti ambayo yako katikati na kitovu cha mji wa Mombasa kama a, a, Mombasa Memorial Cathedral iliyojengwa mwaka moja mia tisa na kumi mbali na majengo tofauti tofauti ambayo zamani ilikuwa ni miji ambayo watu wanakaa kama vile majengo uh, majengo mjini uh, pamoja na uh, upande wa Chuda na Baxter mbele sana Samuel Ah tunao watu tunao waenzi katika mji wetu wa Mombasa kiwemo watangazaji wa zamani Leonard Mambo Mbotela almaarufu kama je huu ni ungwana ni mzalia wa hapa hapa Freetown yeye pia ni kizalia cha utumwa kizungu anasema descendant of freed slaves atunaye Hadija Ali mtangazaji mkongwe zaidi pale idhaa ya taifa KBC tunaye almarhum profesa Lamin Mazrui mkwasi wa lugha na historia tunaye uh, msemaji wa ikulu bi Kanze Dena pia yeye ni uh, ni kizalia wa watumwa tunaye gavana wetu Ali Hassan Joho kwa jina la Utani 001 tunaye pia Chef Ali Mandri 
um, kwa sina gwiji wa mapishi uh, wengi mshamuona citizen asubuhi na wili sraburu mkizalia wa mji huu tunaye pia waziri wetu Najib Balala waziri wa utalii kwa hivyo hao ndio watu uh, tafa, baadhi tu sio watu wote baadhi tu ya watu ambao mji huu na wawenzi na ku wa, wa shukuru kwa mfano bado tuna wastaafu meya wetu wa zamani kiwemo mzee Rajab Sumba ambao walikuhudumu katika a, a, serikali ya, ya utawala miaka sabini na sitini. Tusonge mbele sana. Katika mahanjumati na maandalizi ya makulati kama picha zinavyoonesha hapo juu ni shawarma wengi wana wanaipenda asilia yake si huku asilia yake ni India lakini ilipofika huku iliweza kidogo kuongezwa ongezwa vihodozi uh, kisha hapo chini kuna kibakuli hicho kibakuli ndani kuna kitu tunakiita urojo kwa wale ambao labda washa tembea tembea katika hali ya ku onja onja urojo kuna urojo tofauti kuna urojo wa muhogo na kuna urojo wa viazi wa kutianganywa na ndimu na pilipili ama na limau kisha the famous saying ya kuvurunya hapo kando kuna viazi karai na bajia na tuna aina tofauti tofauti za bajia kuna maru bajia za kihindi kuna bajia za kunde za kihindi na bajia za dingu kwa hivyo katika kutanganisha mambo pojo ndio walioko katika miji mengine mbali na Mombasa wanaita dengu lakini huku dengu ziko rangi ya njano si zile mnazoziita pojo pojo huku tunaziita pojo ziko rangi ya kijani kijani hafifu kisha tuna viazi karai ambao viko tofauti tofauti viko viazi karai vya kuvuruga viazi karai vya masala kisha kuna samaki wa kupaka Aa, ni mapishi asilia ya zamani viko pia samaki wa kuchemsha walimau na aina kadhaa kadhaa ya vyakula wali wanazi na mishikaki aina tofauti tofauti iko paka mishikaki ya maini na vyakula vinginevyo ambavyo mkijaliwa kuja mji wa Mombasa mnaweza mkavionja na mkavipata katika hoteli na mikahawa tofauti tofauti hiyo Tusonge mbele sawa Ah katika a, a, mji wa Mombasa tunao o, tunao opportunities nyingi ambapo hizi ni nafasi ambazo ni nyingi zimetokana na za kiserikali ya kigatuzi ya Mombasa na serikali kuu na washirika wa kitaifa na kimataifa kwa mfano uchumi wa bahari ambayo inaitwa blue economy ambapo viko vitu vingi ambavyo vinaweza kuleta tija na a, a, na manufaa katika mji wa Mombasa soko vijana na wakazi wake ambapo hapa nikisema wakazi sisemi vizalia asilia nisema kila mmoja ambaye anaita Mombasa nyumbani. Aa, kwa mfano iko michezo ya majini katika uchumi bahari, iko michezo ya kuvua, iko uh, michezo tofauti tofauti. Kwa mfano ya kucheza na uh, uh, kite zile. Aa, pia kuna uchumi wa ubunifu ambao ni creative economy ambao inakusanya sana itikadi na tamaduni tofauti tofauti kwa mfano Mombasa kila mwaka ni hivi sasa tuko sababu ya janga la corona tulikuwa wako tuna tamasha la kitaifa ambayo sasa ilikuwa linaenda kimataifa linaitwa tukutane Mombasa juma zima ambalo wageni tofauti tofauti na wakazi wa Mombasa ambao wawe ilikuwa wanaweza kuja kuja kujionea tamaduni historia itikadi ya mji wa watu wa Mombasa 
ambapo viko vya kula ziko nyimbo na Mombasa ina a, a, nyimbo ya tasnia nyingi kuna tarab kuna bango kuna nyimbo asilia ambazo ni tarab asilia wacha hizi sasa za kuwekwa bendi lakini zilikuwa zikitumia ala tofauti tofauti kama fidla zeze zunzumari kinubi na ngoma kadhaa kadhaa kama msewe zilikuwako a, a, miji wa Mombasa zikichezwa miaka ya nyuma a, ngoma hizo kidogo sasa zinapotea kwa mfano lele mama ngoma hii ilikuwa ikichezwa kwenye mabao ambayo kidogo yameinuliwa juu kwa hivyo watu walikuwa waweza kuruka na nyingine nyingi kama chakacha zote zilikuwa ni ngoma na a, a, zilikuwa kuni shughuli ambazo zinaleta watu pamoja kwa hivyo kuna huu uchumi wa ubunifu ambao sasa washirika tofauti wamekuja kuja ku, kujaribu kuregesha iwe ni mfumo wa uchumi ambao unafaidi vijana na watu wa Mombasa kwa mfano kuna shirika linaloitwa Global Development Incubator ndilo sasa linashughulikia masuala ya uh, uchumi ya ubunifu kisha kuna teknolojia kuna kitovu cha teknolojia kiwemo Swahili Port ambapo vijana wengi sasa wanakwenda pale kufanya masuala ya uvumbuzi na masuala mengineyo katika fashion na masuala ambayo yanaihusu teknolojia kwa jumla kuna kituo kinaitwa close the gap ambapo ni kituo cha biashara cha kufundishia na kukuza vipaji za vijana wanaoenukia katika fani ya biashara na ujasiri ya mali. Next. Uh, changamoto ziko nyingi mji wa Mombasa ukilinganishwa kwamba ndiyo kaunti ndogo katika taifa letu la Kenya ambapo tuna uhaba wa maji nikisema maji ni maji safi ya kunywa na salama pia tuna uhaba wa miundo mbinu ambayo kidogo hapa miundo mbinu ni barabara zetu kwa sababu mji wetu ulitengenezwa miaka iliyopita zaidi ya mia saba, mia nane ambapo sasa barabara zake kidogo zimekuwa ndogo ndio tuna foleni ki, 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 Kiswahili traffic jam ni foleni ndio tuna foleni kubwa zinashuhudiwa asubuhi watu wakitaka kwenda kazini ama kuingia mjini na jioni wakirudi kutoka mjini so foleni zinakuwa kubwa pia tuna uhaba wa miundo mbinu tofauti tofauti kama shule shule kuu ama hivi vituo sasa vya kufundisha kizungu naita technical uh, institutions zote tuna uhaba kwa sababu kisha nafasi yetu ya, ya, ya upanuzi ni ndogo kwa sababu hatu hatujasonga mbali hivyo alafu kuna swala la takataka ili ni swala nyeti swala zito sana ambalo mji wetu unajaribu kadri ya uwezo wake kulitatua kiangalikana kwamba ni mji wa kitalii lakini changamoto lazima ziweko na zitafutwe uh, suluhisho lake Uh, na pia tuna shida sana ya maji maji especially maji taka ambayo yana shida kwa sababu katika ujenzi unaoendelea umji ulipangwa zamani na sasa watu wanapoenukia kujenga majumba mapya ya kale katika katikati ya mji uzuri wale waliokuja wiki zile za nyuma tulipokuwa na ile shughuli ya upanzi wa miti uh, hawa hatukuweza ku, kupatana na mvua kidogo ikaleta uh, mifereji ya maji duni lakini mvua ikiendelea ku, kuonyesha huwa tunapata shida ya mifereji ya maji duni budoi Uh, pia kuna mikakati mbalimbali mbali ambayo imewekwa 
na uvumbuzi ambao kwanza nitazungumzia kuhusu shirika la Global Opportunities Youth Network going ili shirika limeleta vijana pamoja katika maswala mbali mbali ambapo vijana wanahusika katika kuweka miundo misingi na miundo mbinu ya kibiashara, kisanaa, kiutawala na kiuongozi. Kwa hivyo katika mradi huu vijana wamnanufaika sana kwa mafunzo ya nje na ndani ya darasa. Uh, kuna Pwani Technobiz Forums, uh, siku hizi Mombasa tu, tunajizatiti ku, kukumbatia teknolojia ambapo tunachanganya teknolojia na biashara na tunaonyesha tuna maonyesho mbali mbali ambao utendeka katika mji wetu huu wa Mombasa upande ule wa Swahili Port ambapo vijana wanakuwa wabunifu katika kuunda vitu mbali mbali kiwemo vitu vya nyumbani vitu vya matumizi na mitandao tofauti tofauti kisha tunatukutane Mombasa tamasha letu la kila mwaka walinatendeka mwezi wa tisa, mwezi wa Septemba wakati wa siku ya utalii duniani kisha tuna Mombasa Go Talent ambapo pia ili ni tamasha la wiki nzima la kutafuta sanaa chipukizi katika huu mji kiangaliwa kwamba gavana wetu ni mtu anapenda wasanii na na sanaa sana kwa hivyo amekumbatia kwa hali ya juu masuala ya usanii na sana. Alafu pia tunayo jumuiya ya kaunti za pwani ambayo hii inahusika sasa na masuala ya biashara, uongozi na utawala ambapo kaunti zote za ukanda wa pwani zinakuja pamoja katika masuala tofauti tofauti. Na ikumbukwe kwamba mtu akisema yuwaja Mombasa na kuja Mombasa mjini. Kwa hivyo usiseme kwamba unakuja Mombasa kimaanisha unaenda Kilifi. Kilifi ni Kilifi, kwale ni kwale na Mombasa ni Mombasa. Budoi. Kwa mapendekezo ambayo nimeleta leo ni mapendekezo manne. Moja ni kwamba tunajizatiti kuwa tufanye kuwa Mombasa kiwe kitovu cha utalii na sio kitovu kitovu bora cha utalii ambapo unapata ile asilia ya tamaduni na itikadi za Mombasa licha ya kuwa ni itikadi nyingi lakini kwa kirefu uh, tamaduni ya Kiswahili kwa hivyo ndio maana tume chini ya uongozi wa gavana wetu tumeanza kupiga rangi majumba yetu yawe nyeupe na samawati ambao samawati ni blue bahari ili tuweze kufikia yale malengo na ruwaza tulionayo ya kuwa kitovu cha utalii bora a pia katika masuala ya PCVE ambapo Kiswahili ni itikadi kali uh, umoja wa mataifa umependekeza kwamba watu na miji tofauti tofauti waje kuja kusoma katika mji huu wa Mombasa vile tumeweza kutatua changamoto mbali mbali katika masuala ya ugaidi na itikadi kali uh, kisha Mombasa sasa imenukia kwamba imewekeza katika teknolojia na biashara. Ikitakumbukwa kwamba vijana wengi mjini Mombasa wameinukia sasa kuwa katika masuala ya teknolojia ikiwemo aliyevumbua Mpesa ni alikuwa mwanachuo katika chuo cha kiufundi cha Technical University of Mombasa. Kwa hivyo tunazidi kujivunia na wengine wengi tofauti ambao wanainukia na kuenzi teknolojia na biashara. 
kisha tunajikita kwamba tuwe kitovu cha sanaa itikadi na utamaduni kwamba Mombasa ndio iko na ile inaitwa Swahili Center ambapo ni kituo ambacho watu wanaweza kuja na kusoma na kujifunza na kuelezwa kuhusu uasisi wa lugha na tamaduni ya Kiswahili na venye mji ulivyoanzia mpaka sasa ulipofika Samuel Ah shukran sana kunipa masikio yenu katika hichi kipindi kifupi ambapo nimekuwa mnenaji wenu kunena machache kuhusu kaunti yangu ninayoipenda Mombasa 001 Asante Wa, asante sana Ambassador Joseph Nazari kutoka County 001 that is Mombasa County. Tunashukuru sana kwa uvumilivu wa ambassadors wetu. tumefikia uh, kipindi chetu cha mwisho. Uh, county ambassador Tajedo County um, is called Philip Juma was to present and uh, unfortunately is not on the call so um we can leave at that kelly do you have any presentation for pakamega um, thank you so much joseph that was a very wonderful and uh, you know deep research for your county and we really appreciate are moving forward we're going to have more of our county ambassador and actually other people from different counties visiting Mombasa Santi sana karibu Santi so i think having having no any other comment and uh, presentation um we like to come to the end of our presentation today and our um meeting with our county ambassador and the presentation i really like to thank you so much for your you know inputs and actually staying on the call to the last minute i do appreciate you and uh, we're looking forward to starting our uh, training tomorrow on leadership and community development you receive the material on your google classroom please be kind to you know uh, be involved uh, interact on your google classroom ask questions we are not you know understanding and we are going to have a wonderful end of our cohort you know so and then july we'll have our second cohort application refer your friends to apply and uh, yeah so thank you so much guys and uh, i'd like to thank i'd like to take this chance to officially close today's session and we are looking forward to an interactive engagement on our whatsapp group and of course on the google classroom thank you so much and god bless you thank you samuel thank you samuel can i add on something kindly kindly joseph proceed uh, niruhusu na washa video nataka muone kwamba leo nimevalia mavazi asilia ya Kiswahili uh, nimevalia shuka ambayo ni, ni shuka hii ya kiume uh -huh. shuka nyeusi uh -huh. ambayo ni inajifungwa na wazee wa Kiswahili ambao ni waume wakati uh -huh. jioni wamepumzika wanapata kahawa na tende barazani kwa hivyo hii ni shuka ni shuka santeni sana Umeshtua umeshtua ambassador Obara from KC naona pia yeye na koshua next time atakuwa na presentation safi sana kuhusu KC county Asante sana that was very <laughs> Kelly umekataa kuwakilisha watu wako wa Kakamega watakulani ya bure ni sawa nimeshukuru 
<laughs> Thank you so much, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>